Click on any button to see how hybrid orbitals are produced. The SP2 type of hybridization involves the mixing of one S and two P orbital, resulting in the formation of three equivalent SP2 hybrid orbitals. Note that the number of hybrid orbitals equals the number of atomic orbitals that have hybridized. The set of three sp2 hybrid orbitals has a trigonal planar geometry. The angle between the orbitals is 120 degrees. Each sp2 hybrid orbital has 33% s character and 67% p character. The SP type of hybridization involves the mixing of one S and one P orbital, resulting in the formation of two equivalent SP hybrid orbitals. Note that the number of hybrid orbitals equals the number of atomic orbitals that have hybridized. The set of two SP hybrid orbitals has a linear geometry. The angle between the orbitals is 180 degrees. Each SP hybrid orbital has 50% S character and 50% P character. This type of hybridization involves the mixing of 1s and 3p orbitals, resulting in the formation of four equivalent sp3 hybrid orbitals. Note that the number of hybrid orbitals equals the number of atomic orbitals that have hybridized. The set of four sp3 hybrid orbitals has a tetrahedral geometry. The angle between sp3 hybrid orbitals is 109.5 degrees. Each sp3 hybrid orbital has 25% s character and 75% p character. The electron orbitals represent a volume of space within which an electron would have a certain probability of existing. This is based on particular energy states and atoms. In a simple lowest energy state, the electrons are most likely to be found within a sphere around the nucleus of an atom. The s orbitals look like simple spheres, regardless of n value. s orbitals are actually concentric spheres. In a higher energy state, the shape of the orbital depends on many factors. The most important are the quantum numbers associated with the particular energy state. These are n, the principal quantum number l, the orbital quantum number, and m, the angular momentum quantum number. Let us examine the bonding in three molecules, ethane, ethene and ethine. Click on any molecule to see the bonding. This is the Lewis structure of ethane. There are four VSEPR pairs of electrons around carbon-1. Now count the number of VSEPR electrons around carbon-2. There are four VSEPR pairs around carbon-2 as well. The VSEPR model predicts that the geometry around each carbon atom is tetrahedral. According to valence bond theory, four sp3 hybrid orbitals have a tetrahedral arrangement. 
We can explain the bonding in ethane if we assume that each C atom is sp3 hybridized. Each hybrid orbital contains one valence electron. The bond formed between two carbon atoms is called a sigma bond. This is a covalent bond formed by an end-to-end -end overlap of sp3 orbitals. The electron density is concentrated between the nuclei of the bonding atoms. The remaining three sp3 orbitals on each carbon atom overlap with 1s orbitals of hydrogen to form six sigma bonds. Two electrons are shared in each sigma bond. Recall that a single bond is composed of one sigma bond. Rotation can occur about a sigma bond as the sigma bond does not break at rotation. Consider the Lewis structure of ethene. Now count the number of VSEPR pairs of electrons around carbon 1. There are three VSEPR electron pairs around carbon 1. Recall that double and triple bonds are counted as single bonds in the VSEPR model. There are three VSEPR electron pairs around carbon 2 as well. The VSEPR model predicts that the geometry around each carbon atom is trigonal planar. According to valence bond theory, three sp2 hybrid orbitals have a trigonal planar arrangement. The bonding can be explained if we assume that each carbon atom is sp2 hybridized. Each hybrid orbital would contain one valence electron. That means that for each carbon we would have accounted for three of the four valence electrons. The bond formed between the two carbon atoms is called the sigma bond. A sigma bond is a covalent bond formed between the orbitals overlapping end to end. The electron density is concentrated between the nuclei of the bonding atoms. In this sigma bond, the two electrons are shared between the two carbon nuclei. When the hydrogens are added, the remaining two sp2 hybrid orbitals on each carbon overlap with the 1s1 hybrid orbital of hydrogen end to end, forming four sigma bonds. Two electrons are shared in each sigma bond. Now, one more bond needs to be explained. Which orbitals overlap to form the second bond of the carbon-carbon double bond? When sp2 hybrids are formed, a 2pz orbital does not take part in hybridization. Therefore, each carbon atom has a 2pz orbital perpendicular to the sp2 hybrid orbitals and contains the fourth valence electron. Now let us observe the orbital overlap. The two pz orbitals can overlap side to side. This kind of covalent bond is called a pi bond. The electron density is concentrated above and below the plane of the nuclei of the bonding atoms. In a pi bond, the electrons are shared. The two electrons are free to move through both regions of the bond. A double bond is thus composed of one sigma bond and one pi bond. Rotation does not occur about a double bond. For rotation to occur along the carbon-carbon bond, the pi bond would have to be broken. Consider the Lewis structure of ethyne. Now, count the number of VSEPR pairs of electrons around carbon-1. There are two VSEPR pairs. Recall that double and triple bonds are counted as single bonds in a VSEPR model. There are two VSEPR electron pairs around carbon-2. The VSEPR model predicts that the geometry about each carbon atom is linear. In valence bond theory, two sp hybrid orbitals have a linear arrangement. The bonding in ethyne can be explained if we assume that each carbon atom is sp hybridized. 
each hybrid orbital would contain one electron. This means that for each carbon, we have accounted for two of its four valence electrons. The bond formed between the two carbon atoms is called a sigma bond. A sigma bond is a covalent bond formed by orbitals overlapping end to end. The electron density is concentrated between the nuclei of the bonding atoms. In this sigma bond, the two electrons are shared between the two carbon nuclei. When hydrogen atoms are added, the remaining sp hybrid orbitals on each carbon atom form a sigma bond by overlapping with the hydrogen 1s1 orbital. Two electrons are shared in each sigma bond. There are still two more bonds to be explained. Which orbitals overlap to form the second and third bonds between the carbon-carbon triple bond? When sp hybrids are formed, a py and a pz orbital do not mix to form the hybrids. Each carbon atom has both a 2py and a 2pz orbital that can overlap. Each p orbital contains one valence electron. These account for the third and the fourth valence electrons for each carbon atom. Now let us observe the overlap of the p orbitals. Both the 2py and the 2pz orbitals can overlap side to side. This kind of covalent bond is called a pi bond. The electron density is concentrated above and below the plane of the nuclei of the bonding atoms. In each pi bond, two electrons are shared. The electrons are free to move in both the regions of the bond. A triple bond is composed of one sigma and two pi bonds. For rotation to occur along the carbon-carbon bond, the pi bonds will have to be broken.